A lot of things hang in the balance when you choose software to improve your real-time decision-making. People you hire, the displays you build, the alerts you set up, and on and on. You want to go with an approach that's fully formed from end to end with nothing missing. One that works in your industry and scales large enough for your large sites and small enough for your small sites. Thankfully, 30 years ago, someone had the vision to make a system with this approach in mind. Here's a conference session of Dr. J. Patrick Kennedy recorded in 1993. This is 19 years before the New York Times said big data had reached the mainstream. We're rethinking the way the software can be used to extract a lot of value from this data for the users. And that's really the underlying theme of this conference. Back then, Pat imagined a system where users have the right to see their real-time data gathered in one place and served up to whomever needs it at the right time, and with enough context to make sense of it. We think your accountants need to be able to see the data. We think your process engineers need to be able to see the process. And they have to understand how it is used, and they have to be able to share their knowledge with everybody else. He said from the start that the data infrastructure has inherent value that is far greater than custom projects. There's no value in the data itself. It's only the applications on top of the data that give you any value. Anybody believe that? Better stop selling pie, because that's just absolutely not true. These people and their big bloated applications that never work and never communicate are inconsequential compared to a sharp young engineer that has the information on their desktop in front of them in a timely manner. Pat was one of a small group of chemical engineers in the early 80s who created the real-time data industry as we know it today. In the decades since, companies have learned that as they build or acquire new assets, all of their various data sources can be presented in a single real-time data system. Early on, Pat turned OSIsoft away from turnkey systems and custom solutions. He kept after only those things that support real-time performance, like high-speed data collection, visualizations, notifications, event framing, and analytics. Along the way, he resisted all the side trips, like vertical applications to fill gaps in the marketplace and tailor-made versions of the Pi system. He wanted instead for his team to remain what he called the idiot savants of data. In a business where you learn so much about what different people do, which happens with every database company, it's always tempting to go into these businesses yourself. But we resisted that temptation. Because the Pi system is critical infrastructure, OSIsoft has treated customers differently than others in their space. For example, free upgrades have always been included with tech support, even across operating systems. To make sure nothing ever got in the way of an engineer who needs his data, license keys were always only a phone call away. And across 30 years of new products and platforms, no customer ever had to abandon his existing data, displays, or calculations. It would be devastating if we decided every year we're going to build something new and, oh, by the way, just throw away that old thing. We're not going to build you a path. That would be devastating. Our first customer still has our most modern system. We've done this since, since the early 80s. In operations, he had learned that the people who know their process best make the best custom projects, if they're given the right tools. We are promoting an architecture that allows our users to change, and we're committing to help them make that change. And we're the only company that does that. An application doesn't move you to the future. An application, maybe if it works, which we would say they don't, but maybe they do sometimes, gives you a profit one point in time. You put in an architecture and you've just bought your future. And that's what we sell. It's been Pat's life's work to create that infrastructure and to create teams that help customers get the most out of it. Over the past 30 years, Pat's faith in the creativity of end users has proven well-founded. There's a Chilean copper company called Cadelco. Five years ago, some of the young engineers there said, you know, this is going to change the world. They got together, they went to the boss, and they said, we have to put in this infrastructure. We went down there last year to give a seminar, and we typically at a seminar, we invite a customer in to give a talk. They flew in from all over. They had six examples. They were 30 projects going on at any time. 
And the reason is that, in, for example, to do management of water, it was no longer a million dollar project. It was a spreadsheet, the data were there, a few analyzers, a little engineering, and by getting the cost of the project down to where it was handled by the operations people, they were doing projects all over the place. It was amazing to see how fast they were going. As you consider what to use to achieve your decision support goals, and consequently what software your people are going to be using for a long, long time, ask yourself, whose vision is the most adaptable, the most reliable, the most ambitious? In short, whose vision do you trust? We think our role is not appreciably different than it's been for 30 years. Our role is to try to find these enablers, try to understand how they're going to impact ourselves, our customers, our environment, and then build the software that people need to be able to take advantage of these changes. People that buy from us today know that whoever wins these battles, we're going to move them to the next generation. And what we're trying to show is to be as open as we can, teach you a new vocabulary, but still support everything that you have out there running as long as you need it to run.